This is Mike Cook. I'm here in my home gym and I'm ready to bring you episode 21 of Anti-Doping Updates. Today we've got stories of two American sprinters, one Obi Ibakwe and second an update on the Christian Coleman decision. Okay, let's get started. First up is Obi Ibakwe. He is an American sprinter, mostly on the NCAA a, um, scene where he's done most of his competitive career. But in the 2019 World Championships, he was selected to be on the team for the 4 by 400 meter relay uh, that took place in Doha. And uh, Obi ran in one of the preliminary heats of it, but not in the final. USA eventually did win the final, but he didn't participate in that. In May of 2020, he was selected for out-of-competition testing, and he tested positive for DHCMT, or oral tyrannobol. Oral tyrannobol, or tyrannobol anyway, is a anabolic steroid prohibited at all times, both in and out of competition. This was a national level test, so USADA, the United States Anti-Doping Agency, was the one who uh, administered the test and handled the results management. They uh, found an anti-doping rule violation for presence of a prohibited substance. Ibakwe did not challenge the results of it and USADA sanctioned him for 30 months, uh, so he's out for, for quite a while. The usual sanction for an intentional violation um, of prohibited substance is four years, so, and USADA did not publish their reasoned decision about it, so I'm guessing that they went down from the four-year sanction to 30 months based on prompt admission and not challenging the results. So, 30 months for OB Ibakwe. Okay, next up is an update on Christian Coleman. Christian Coleman is another American sprinter who's, who was ranked number one in the world in the 100 meters in 2019. He is a um, part of the registered testing pool and is subject to make whereabouts filings each quarter. If an athlete uh, has three whereabouts filings failures during a 12-month period, they can be sanctioned with a two-year period of ineligibility. So the uh, Athletics Integrity Unit charged him with that particular violation based on three whereabouts filings in a 12-month period. And uh, two of them were ones that he contested. One was where he um, indicated in his whereabouts filings that he would be at home, when in fact he went to a competition at the Drake Relays. His home is in Lexington, Kentucky, and the Drake Relays are um, not there. They're somewhere else, or Iowa, I believe. So, he, um, so when he was contacted by the doping control officer, he, number one, said, well, I'm available for testing here, and number two, tried to change his whereabouts filings after the fact. The uh, Athletics Integrity Unit, which is the um, disciplinary body for world athletics didn't accept that argument. The next uh, whereabouts filing failure was a missed test on December 9th. Again, Christian Coleman said he was he'd be at home. The doping control officers showed up at his home. The one hour period was um, 7 to 8 p.m. and Coleman wasn't at home during that time. And his argument was that if the doping control officer had called him, he could have returned home from Christmas shopping, where he was, which is what he was doing, and been there in, in within the 60-minute window and been available for testing. So the, um, he, he argued that he should not be uh, completely at fault for that. The Athletics Integrity Unit didn't accept that argument, and um, they found that he was, he can be fairly described as entirely careless, even reckless. 
And so the Athletics Integrity Unit sanctioned him with a two-year period of ineligibility. Christian Coleman appealed that decision to the Court for Arbitration of Sport, which is headquartered in Switzerland, and they held a video conference hearing, and they decided to, that um, the Athletics Integrity Unit had proved that he had three whereabouts filings in a 12-month period and had committed an anti-doping offense, anti-doping violation, and should be sanctioned. But they reduced the period from um, two years down to 18 months. And that's because they accepted Coleman's argument that if the doping control officers had called him during the 60 minute window, uh, he could have returned home and been available for testing. Now, as far as the international standards for testing and investigation goes, the doping control officers are not required to call the, the, the athlete that they're conducting the test. They're required to do whatever is reasonable under the circumstances, but a, a phone call isn't, ahead of time phone call isn't required. That's, that's, um, that's why they're unannounced uh, tests. Uh, but nevertheless, the Court for Arbitration of Sport found that it was customary practice for a doping control officer to, in fact, call the athlete sometime during the one hour period if, if the athlete isn't immediately available at the location to try to locate the individual, and found that the doping control officer's failure to do that was, was one of the causes of the missed test, and therefore, um, Christian Coleman had shown that he was um, had no significant fault or negligence, and therefore the reduction in sanction can be reduced down from 24 months or two years down to the 18 months. However, that still means that Christian Coleman it has that 18 month sanction, and it means that he's out of the Olympics. Uh, he was hoping to get that sanction reduced so that he could compete in the and the Tokyo Olympics coming up later uh, this year in 2021. But now that's not gonna be possible. His suspension period doesn't end until well after the Olympics. So Christian Coleman, number one sprinter in the world, still out of the Olympics. We won't see him representing the United States in the Olympics. So that's it for anti-doping updates for this week. I'll be back next week with another exciting episode.